It's easy to see where these trees are going. This right here is the most dangerous one you got. Yeah. The fatal mistake people make is cutting a notch back in here and then coming from the back and start cutting. Yeah. Well, that tree will start falling before you can get it cut plumb off. Yeah. And if it does that, it'll bust. And when it busts, the lower part of the tree is going to be like this. And the back end is going to separate and come up. Yeah. It may go 20 feet back that way. Good grief. And, and, and it'll, it'll kill you. It's what they call barber chair in one. Or just flat out busting one. So what I'm doing is I'm going to go ahead and cut the notch here. And that's determined the, where the tree's base is going to go. When it stops it up and up, yeah. it's going to that tree right toward that little hickory right there. Yeah. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to bore in from the sides. I'm going to leave my hinge about an inch wide in the front right here. Yeah. That'll keep that tree from setting down until I get all the middle cut out of it. Yeah. I'll get all the middle. I'll go from this side and I'll go from that side. And I'll leave about that much meat in the back holding. Yeah. Then I'll come to the back and I'll clip that off. See, the whole tree's cut at that point. Yeah. Oh, no it's left. just a little bit on the back side that's holding it. Yeah, it's what we call a trigger. In other words, you've got it all cut out. It's cocked. You pull the trigger and the tree's going. Yeah. And that's all it's holding it up there. But there's nothing in here for it to bust. That hinge. It's already gone. It'll just fall oh. right over. The hinge will still be there. Yeah. The hinge is just like a door. But you're not going to have a big chunk of wood in the middle that can explode no, on you. No splinters, no nothing to bust. And it's especially dangerous in a leaning tree. This one here leans really bad. That tree has got to bust on it. This one here, it leans not as bad as that one, but it's still a very dangerous tree. All three of them are. So we got to take a little extra time. I'll stand back and watch what you do now, now that All I understand. Right. Yeah, I'm going to start boring in behind that. All right. And when you look at my stump, when I get done, it'll make sense too, because you'll be able to see that hinge will still be on this stump. <laughs> You've left the middle there to keep it from falling down. Come right here and look. If you get down and look, you can see it underneath it. You sure can. So now the middle's gone. I've got that piece of tree right there in the middle that's still attached. Yeah, I'm going to cut this a little bit more right here. And see, that's our trigger that's back trigger there. trigger that might make it fall. Excellent. It's ready to fall now if that's cut, but you're going to make sure it's good and safe. Now I'm just going to cut a little bit more right there. Huh? This right here is all that was holding it up. Yeah. And that's also how you kick yourself and get stuck in the right. tree. Now this in here is going to be a little harder. Yeah. I'm going to... It leans the opposite way. Yeah, it's going to... It leans that way pretty bad. And to make, to make us... To believe that we can actually put it over there, you can't do it. Even with wedges, you can't do it. You can do it with a cable yeah. and pull it with 30,000 pound hydraulics. But what I'm going to hope for, I'm going to use the same technique, but instead of boring all the way through, I'm going to bore this side out and leave a lot wider of a hinge on that side so that when it starts falling, it'll pull it. And what I'm going to try to do is to get to fall across this tree instead of going out over in there. Gotcha. I might actually change it up a little. The uh, chainsaw pros will tell you not to do this. The way I cut the first one is the safest way to cut a tree, period. So I'm actually going to cut this one. I'm going to bore the heart and I'm going to cut it from around the back. 
and that should help to pull it a little bit. You get the danger of this is is the tree busting. Yeah. But if I get the heart out right, it, it shouldn't bust. But it should help it pull a little bit more. say 30, 30 to 40 degrees more that way. You always cut this off so it don't look like a rookie. Yeah. <laughs> now this one obviously we're not going to try and pull it out. You're going to try to go back through yonder. We're just going to try and get it to go in that hole right there. Okay. There's a limb on that hole tree right there. It's probably going to, it may or may not turn out. You gotta watch for stuff like that coming back at you too. Yeah. That's why when I cut one, I always go the opposite way. Get away from. It. So whenever we get ready to make the final cut, look back over here so we're the safest place. Okay. All right. But watch you cut. Right now you're fine. All right. a little but still it's pretty awesome but with a tree leaning that heavy it's hard to do anything with wow well they're down so there you go sweet <laughs> thank you <laughs> let's go up and check out that uh let's check out that view now i bet it's made a difference it's made a huge difference i gotta come down here and saw this out and anything that's fell on the other property pull it back you ain't got nothing on other property unless that one that broke off down there yeah, I'll go take a look and see. I'm going to cut it all up and move it around anyway. I'm going to get it back up the hill. I would like to do something with these logs if I could. Well, I don't know how you're going to get them out of there. I don't either. Be, they'll, they'll weigh a thousand pounds. An eight foot section is going to weigh four or five hundred pounds. <laughs> oh well. Maybe it'll just be firewood then. <laughs> Unreal. Let's look at these stumps in the final thing here. And those of you who cut trees will see what we so tell me the story of this last one you did here. What did you do? Same thing. I'm, I cut me a real shallow notch. And, and you I, always leave this wood in the beginning. That's what people usually cut into that. Yeah, see, that's the mistake. And I think it comes from people cutting with cross-cut siles yeah. that didn't have the ability to bore into a tree. Yeah. They had to cut as far as they could in this way till the tree almost set down. So always the best strategy is cut a steep notch in the front and leave a couple inches of wood in the middle, right? I'm sorry. Oop, sorry, yeah. Sorry, I had my head. I'm, I'm screaming because I had the, <laughs> had the head set well, off. 
it's most definitely the safest way. You have more control over that tree. Let's say this tree's standing straight up. You cut your notch like this. And the wind blows and it sets back this way. Well, it won't fall. It'll just stand there. It, that tree will either fall that way or it'll just set back in your center. That hinge right there will hold that tree. Yeah. It'd be hard to take that a little, bulldozer. That, that two inches of, of, right. of, un, of splinters It'd there. It'd be hard to take a bulldozer and push that tree the wrong way. Oh, wow. But if you put your hinge in the middle, that tree basically can go either way. Yeah. It's like a door that would open. So don't let, way. don't allow it that. No. no. I'll, I'll, I'll only allow it to, you, you, you make a, a small high cut. I've noticed you make this yeah. kind of cut here. And then you leave this, then you bore into the middle sometimes you leave this back here as your trigger, you say. Right. If the tree's leaning, that get, if you leave this holding back here, as much as you want to really, but three or four inches will be plenty. That gives you time to bore all this middle out, go over here to this other side, bore all this middle out, and then cut from the back. Keep that tree from busting. If you cut a notch like this and that tree's leaning, mm -hmm. and you start cutting from the back, that tree will start falling before you can ever cut it. And that's when it's gonna bust and kick back and hit you in the face and kill you. Well, I've got a lot of sawing to do. <laughs> yes, sir. And I guess I'll start doing it. I wouldn't start today. No, if I want today, but <laughs> it's kind of late today, but I will start doing it soon. <laughs> Tim, you're awesome. You're a pro. Well, it's fun to watch a real guy that knows how to cut a tree down do it the right way. Well, he always little makes little, them fall the right way. I have a little life at me, but uh, what I'm showing you there is the safest way. I do it all day long. Every day, usually bigger trees. Yeah. And the directional paneling like that, it's pretty important if you're going to try and get a tree out of the woods after you cut it down. Yeah. And if you're going to try and save the other timber too. Now this oak here, I'll probably take it out too, but, but just follow your instructions in on that and it'll just make it, it should go just fine, shouldn't it? Yeah, you got to look at where all the weight goes. Yeah. The weight in the top is what makes a difference. That one almost leans up the hill a little bit. Yeah. But that big bend in it, Probably when you go to cut it, I'll help you with it. All right. I won't do it anytime just soon. I'll let you cut it when you put me. I still got a lot of these pines. I'm going to cut these pines up. I'm going to get any brush I've got, pull it into a place where I can burn it, and uh, dispose of it all that way. It looks to me like that one last oak tree down there is going to be in your view. But that's not on my property, is it? I don't think. I think it is. You just have to cut it up the I hill. I just cut it up the hill, yeah.